Welcome to the Japanese Tea Garden area at Brackenridge Park in San Antonio, Texas. This really pretty and scenic little oasis here set in central Texas. It's actually part of a uh, abandoned stone quarry. This is the same quarry, I believe, where the rock was removed to construct a lot of the ancient, ancient, I mean, old buildings here in San Antonio, such as the Alamo. We've got the koi ponds down here, with the fish, and some of the great vegetation here. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. We're going to go take a look at the rock that makes up this quarry, see what makes it so special and why it was used for so many of the local buildings here around San Antonio. So here's a nice view of the tea gardens, kind of looking from the opposite side, the northeast side. You can see how it's set against the walls here of the quarry. Got a little waterfall over here, but we're mainly here to look at the rock here that makes up the Japanese gardens. And here's a good look at one of the quarry walls, one of these old exposures here uh, at the Japanese gardens. And so here you can see the rock is definitely layered. Um, but another cool clue we have here as to what this rock might be is you can see just how polished this surface is right just from people scrambling and maybe kind of messing around here on these ledges just incredibly polished surfaces here which suggests that the rock is fairly soft that you know with a bit of grit in people's shoes and just a little bit of abrasion this rock um, polishes quite easily so we can see some of that uh, that characteristic on the rock wall there yeah, so let's keep exploring this area a little bit and see if we can get some nice exposures of this rock that give us a little bit better clue as to what exactly it is. So here's a nice little outcrop and exposure of this rock unit here that makes up the walls of the quarry. So we've talked about how soft this stuff is. It's obviously layered and bedded, so that suggests it's sedimentary in nature. And this is actually a type of limestone, but it's an interesting type of limestone. It's known formally as the Austin chalk. Now, when you think of chalk, you probably think of, you know, the powdery sticks of, uh, you know, sidewalk chalk that you used as a kid. But to a geologist, a chalk is a very soft type of limestone, usually quite fine grained. And it's made up of basically microscopic small exoskeletons of small organisms that live in the ocean, basically types of plankton. And of course, one of our tests to determine uh, if it is a type of limestone, it should be completely made out of calcium carbonate. So we should see a nice positive reaction here with the acid. When we put the acid on that limestone, you can see it bubbling and fizzing, reacting to the acid and releasing the CO2. So this specific limestone here at the Japanese tea gardens is a unit from the Cretaceous period. This was a time when there was a huge seaway that existed from the Gulf of Mexico and it stretched all the way up to the Arctic Ocean. So this limestone would have formed under maybe several hundred feet of water where these microorganisms and other invertebrates were thriving in the warm tropical waters here in what is now central Texas. So let's maybe explore this unit a little bit more and see if we can see any larger fossils in it. So it turns out some of the best places to kind of pick out the fossils, the larger fossils you can actually see in this limestone are some of the blocks they've used for construction around the grounds here at the Japanese garden. So we can see a whole series of these shells, these broken up particles within the rock here. Um, and some places the shells are broken up maybe due to wave action on that, um, in that environment in which the rocks were deposited. A few more of the shells popping up through here, probably mostly clams, maybe oysters, other simple uh, invertebrates within the unit. A little bit of uh, different material Back up in here, this is actually a little lens of church. You can see it's a little bit different color, has that crypto crystalline look to it. Zoom in a little bit there. A little bit of chert within the limestone. So this would be all silica here, surrounded by the rest of this material, which is calcium carbonate. So just outside the Japanese gardens are some of these older historic buildings. 
uh, built in the late 1800s. The limestone we've been looking at here had just the right amount of lime and clay in it. It actually was a very sought after type of limestone used to make cement, a specific type of cement called Portland cement. And this is the, the kiln here where they would actually uh, create that cement from the crushed limestone. Again, one of the other properties of the limestone is it's pretty much uniform in terms of its density, but because it's so soft, as we've looked at before, it's uh, pretty easy to sculpt into blocks. So you can make these rectangular blocks pretty easy because the material is so soft, and yet it's pretty uniform in density, porosity, permeability, that sort of thing. The one thing that adds a little bit of a sort of a wrinkle in it are, are again these fossils in here. So here's some of the shells in the limestone itself. So these add a little bit of a, a discontinuity, I suppose, in terms of the, the grain size or the particle size in this limestone. But really spectacular stuff. And again, with an amazing story of, you know, tropical seas during the Cretaceous period to becoming a quarry for local building stone here in San Antonio to later on being a scenic attraction as a site of these Japanese gardens. So hey, thanks again for joining me on this short little adventure, just looking at some of the way geology has influenced this area here in central Texas. Appreciate your support of the channel and we'll see you next time. Take care.